What's going on, guys? Uh, so tonight I am doing this one out of boredom, so it's going to be a short one. Uh, but it's just some Colorado court cases that I want to touch on. Um, the main one being, it's called Morales versus Cam LLC, I believe, C A M B. Um, and the situation there, I think, sets a really strong precedent for Colorado. Um, and it's just something I wanted to talk about, I guess. I th I'm assuming there's similar cases in other states. So, know your state law, your case law. Uh, this particular one, I guess the situation is, um, and this is not going to be, I don't, I don't have drawings or anything like that. This is simply me just talking about the principles of, of how this case turned out. Uh, so I believe it was eight, an eight-lot platted subdivision. It was platted in the early 80s, like 81. Uh, so the line in question or, the, or the, the discrepancy that came up, which is why it went to court, was lots five and six, I think it was. Uh, five would be to the south, six is at the north, and they share common corners uh, for the southeast and the northeast is the same. And So that's the lot line between them. So what happened is when the original surveyor did his survey, he ex he says he monumented all the lot corners. There's no discrepancy. There's no, there's no argument that corners were not set by the original surveyor. Um, so all the block corners were set, all the lot corners were set. When in like the early 2000s, maybe, I can't remember the details of the case exactly, but uh, somebody went to replat this property. He owned three lots, let's say three, four, and five, something like that. Um, he owns those three lots, and he goes to replat it, and so he can build townhomes on this on this property he owns. When he goes to replat it and remove the lot lines, they find the the surveyor he hired finds the monuments for the lot line between five and six are 13 feet south of the planted distance of, of where they should be. 13 feet's pretty big. That's that's a pretty big discrepancy or a pretty big blunder, in my opinion, um, from for the surveyor to make. Um, I mean, it's the 80s, but measurements should be much tighter than that. Hell, even in the 1800s, maybe. <laughs> um, but... So he made this mistake there, and the, but the monuments were set. And the key here is he's the original surveyor setting the monuments. So the court, original court, upheld the the founding principle of surveying of those are original monuments. They hold that is that is the boundary between five and six. Now um, there was no discrepancy with you know east or west with senior rights or, or anything like that. You can't convey what you don't own so you can't cross a senior line over here and then suddenly that's the boundary doesn't work like that obviously in this case we're not dealing with senior rights or anything this is a simultaneous conveyance guy sets the monuments on the line he's supposed to set it but they're 13 feet south we'll say uh so the court upholds that's the boundary nothing you can do uh the plaintiff i guess up, appeals that decision uh, goes to the appellate court. This one didn't get taken by the Supreme Court. I don't know if they appealed it again, um, but it's an appellate court decision, and it holds. Uh, so the appellate court agrees with the lower court. This is an original survey. The key here is that it was set in good faith. Um, the surveyor was not committing fraud of some kind. He was not being paid extra money to adjust boundaries. It was a simple mistake in, his, in, in where they set the monuments for the plat. Um, but it sets a principle. So when I was coming up as a surveyor, uh, well, as a younger surveyor, I guess I'm still, still coming up. I'm licensed, but that doesn't mean anything. Uh, there's still a bunch of stuff I don't know. <laughs> but that being said, it sets a precedent because, so the blunder rule, I've always been told, you know, if it's, if it was a clear blunder, um, it's, it's not so final. And I don't, I've never come across it. I've never practiced that or anything like that. It's just what I've been told in the past. Uh, so if that did exist, <laughs> it doesn't in Colorado anymore. Um, those are original monuments set in good faith. Those are the boundaries. That's just, that's just it. So that was a pretty monumental case in, in my opinion. And that is the type of case that the general public 
you know, their minds will explode if you try to explain that to somebody who's losing property because of something like that, because of a principle set like that. So that's kind of what makes our job hard is explaining these types of things that the public has no idea about when they face these situations. It's, I mean, I can, I can understand being outraged. You think you have enough property to, to build townhomes on this reed plat that you're trying to do. And all of a sudden the acreage, you don't have the acreage you thought you did because somebody made a mistake. Uh, so that that's that case. I just wanted to touch on it. I just thought it was a really interesting one. Um, and it sets a precedent for Colorado, which I think it probably already existed, but that one just reaffirms it in, in today's world, of, you know, early 2000s. Um, another case, well, yeah, I'll touch on this one too, because a buddy of mine, uh, we were just discussing it. So this is to touch on the principle of natural monuments uh, versus artificial and the hierarchy of calls, what controls. So this is a Supreme Court case. I don't know what it's called. My buddy, uh, he's in school, so he's doing a project, and we were just going over it together, talking about it. So this particular case was, it was section 21, supposed to be a regular section. A surveyor goes out, I don't, and I don't know what this guy was doing. This was an erroneous survey. But he goes out, he finds the northeast corner of section 21, the west quarter corner of section 21, the east quarter corner, the southeast corner, all of section 21, he finds two trees just north of the northwest corner of section 21. So he finds two, what he calls, I think he calls them bearing trees, but basically what, what they it's, it's scribed, I think it was 17 and 18. Um, I think that's what's above 21. I don't know. Is the two sections to the north, so the northwest corner, section here and a section here. He um, he says he found two trees scribed with, with those two section numbers, 17 and 18, and that's what made him confident in his position where he reestablished the northwest corner. Obviously, this, this is a corner, the northwest corner of 21 is common to four sections. That's a double proportionment method if if it's obliterated um, or if it's lost rather um, so he him reestablishing it based upon finding two trees that are not called for in the original notes so let's talk about that these trees were not called for in the original subdivision notes from 1870 whatever um, so I don't know why he said it there but anyway yeah he went to court and he lost uh, but a major thing here that I want to talk about is what the court found was in the original survey notes, they not only reference a creek being near this northwest corner, they actually give a, a chained distance call to the to the link of, of where this creek is in relation to the northwest corner and actually how many how many links or chains the, the creek is wide. Um, so it was really specific, and that is a call for a natural monument. So the surveyor admittedly says he never searched north of where the northwest corner should have been along section 1718, and he never searched west along the, uh, the common line between what is it, 17 or 18 and whatever. I can't recall how, this, how the sections line up right now. Um, but he, he admittedly never went west and he never went north in order to accomplish that double proportionate measurement if because that's what he had to do. There was no physical evidence telling him where this corner should be. No idea how he actually decided where to put it. Um, but the courts obviously were like, not only did you not do what you're supposed to do, your survey is, is erroneous. However, that call for the creek, even though you found original stones, and this was interesting to me, is... He did find original stones for for the northeast, the west quarter, the south, uh, the east quarter, and the southeast. But they said he, even even if he was close because of that, and and he was right, the call for the creek controls simply because those stones are not set in place, meaning they are not affixed and permanent the way a natural creek would be. Um, and this creek ended up being 300 feet. It was a couple, two or 300 feet north of where he established this. Um, and that was the big deal. So 
what interested me was, was that the court said, you know, I think original stones, holy shit, that's awesome. Like, it's done. He's, he's right in there. Not this particular surveyor because of the way he did it, but an original stone to me, I'm like, that's monumental. That's, that's it. However, the courts, if there's a call for a natural monument, apparently, um, that's going to hold more weight if there's a big discrepancy. I'm sure there's multiple court cases that maybe <laughs> don't go that way. But that was an interesting case to me, was, was that the creek became more important even than the original stones that fall 300 feet south of, more southerly of, of, where, um, of where the creek was called for. So the creek mattered. It was a natural monument. Um, and I don't know what the hell that guy was doing surveying it, but he did not survey it correctly. And uh, he lost that court case, so he probably got sued pretty good. But that's kind of the gist of what I want to talk about. I wanted to keep this video short because they've been pretty long lately. And usually it's me just ranting and talking and teaching and trying to teach uh, complicated topics. And it's boring, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, so I just want to talk about those cases. If you're in Colorado, they affect you. You should be looking at case law. Look, look at that stuff. Um, I'm going to touch on one more thing because <laughs> I thought of it. Another thing in Colorado, um, and I was taught this by a real estate attorney um, who's a very, very good attorney and, and renowned. A, a solid principle, and again, this is probably many other places is iron in the ground controls the intent of the parties. So what that means is if you have a call, if you have a legal description, original surveyor, whoever, guy doing a, a subdivision plat, whatever, calls for the northwest corner of his subdivision to be coincident with a section line or a another parcel southern boundary, he's saying that his monument, his north line, is coincident with another line. That's in the writings, right? But he, um, So that's in the writings. That's the intent, uh, the written intent from the plat or the legal description. However, on his plat or in his description, he calls for having set a monument. Now, this is an original survey. This is not a retracement. Um, he is he's marking his boundaries of this new parcel he's creating on the ground. If that monument falls 10 feet short of the section line or the northerly um, adjoiner, that monument controls the position. Again, we're dealing with original monuments, and they control. And some surveyors had uh, – I was, I was in the room when, when this guy's explaining it with, with other surveyors. One of them was, was just dumbfounded. He just blew his mind. He's like, there's a call for a section line. How the hell are you not going to hold the section line? It's it just blew his mind of of the difference there of that section line. While yes, it is a monument, is a record monument being called for. When you set your monument as the original surveyor, that controls your intent. Whether whether you screwed it up and it meant and it was meant to be ten feet north, doesn't matter, man. You've you've just created a gap between those two parcels, and it's obviously most surveyors it's it's a mistake somehow. Um, you most likely surveyed the line you're trying to be coincident with and something happened. You just botched it, whatever. But yeah, so now there's a gap between these two parcels and it and it's going to hold. It's got to go to court to figure something else out. I don't know who owns the gap now. Not my deal. But that stuff exists. That stuff's important. And that's all I want to talk about, man. I was bored, so I figured I'd, sh I'd shoot the shit with you guys and tell you a couple things. Um... Yep, that's all I got. All right, man, I'll, I'll talk to you guys another time.